I love it. I love it. Wow. <laughs> I love it. Look at this. This is, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Hey, I'm not surprised. Hey, what's poppin' my bros? What's good? Another full card UFC predictions video to make. This one's gonna be Pavlovich taking on Curtis Blades, a really, really good main event. Now, guys, my bets. My bets from last week just got dusted. I made four bets, and all four just got dusted. Now, taking a look at Money City, there's only four. There's only four comments. But yeah, shout out to the people that did get the Money City comments right, and there's only four of you. There's only four, but yeah, let's jump into the card. Let's go. All right, guys, moving into the first matchup on this card, we've got Denar Baccarel taking on Brady Heaston. And my prediction for this matchup is it's pretty straightforward. Essentially, you've got striker versus grappler. You know, Denar Baccarel is the striker and his striking's pretty good. And in all fairness, Brady's striking is, is pretty bad. I'd also say the striking defense of Brady is pretty bad, you know, dropped by Fernie Garcia, dropped by Ricky Tercios. So guys, if Brady stays on the feet and tries to strike with Denar Baccarel, he's probably going to get dusted. On the flip side, if Brady's able to get Denar to the mat, he's probably going to dominate because Denar's not a wrestler, he's not a grappler. For me personally, I'm going to side with Denar Baccarel just because he's got more experience. Guys, in terms of gambling, if you bet this matchup, if Denar gets taken to the mat, he's not going to escape. You know, he's not going to work back to the feet. And if he gets his back taken, it could be a wrap. And the same with Brady on the feet. You know, he's probably going to get dusted. So I do believe Ben on this matchup, it's, it's kind of risky. But like I said, I'm going to side with the experience. And the experience is Denar back out. So give me Denar to find a TKO stoppage. And if that doesn't happen... It's going to be Brady. All right, moving into the next matchup, we've got the Zombie Girl taking on Karini Silva. Now, guys, the Zombie Girl, she does what the Octagon name says. She's a zombie. We all know what Priscilla does. You know, take all the damage. But eventually, if you get tired, you're going to get dusted. It's essentially like the Homer Simpson tactic. You know, take all of the CTE. And then when you get tired... I'm going to dust you. So guys, essentially, if you put your money on the zombie girl, it's going to look bad to begin with, probably. But eventually, it could look like a, a genius bet. On the flip side, Karini Silva is more technical. You know, she's not looking to take brain damage the way zombie girl's looking to take brain damage. And we know that because when you look at Karini in a UFC debut against Pollyanna Botello, she looked pretty technical. She looked pretty good. So really, if you want to put your money on who's more technical, you're going to be putting your money on Karini Silva. If you want to take a risk and put your money on who's not as technical, but who's got more experience and could eventually break the opponent, that's going to be Zombie Girl. For me personally, guys, I'm not going to bet Zombie Girl. I'm not going to bet Karini Silva. And I'm not going to predict that Zombie Girl wins the fight because the striking defense is just not good enough. And I know I said that eventually she can break the opponent, but that's still not good enough to, to place money, in my opinion. So for me personally, I'm going to take who's more technical, and that's going to be Karini Silva. Potentially a submission or a win over 15 minutes. That's going to be my pick. All right, next matchup, we've got Francis Fire Marshall, which is, that's a hilarious octagon name, taking on William Gomez. Now, guys, both of these fighters are, are pretty new to mixed martial arts and their prospects. When you look at Francis Marshall, his boxing's very good. You know, the jab, the one-two, the hooks. His boxing is arguably better than William Gomez. But on the flip side, if you look at Gomez, his kicks are very good. You know, low kicks and high kicks, they're very good. And in all fairness, guys, Francis Marshall is kind of stationary. You know, the lead leg is pretty stationary. So look for William Gomez to land kicks. Like I said, both of these guys are prospects. You know, they're new to mixed martial arts. So this should be a good, good scrap. I also think the grappling should be pretty good because Francis likes to grapple. So does William Gomez. It's a pretty interesting matchup. I think the cardio could go to Francis. But man, he's not really been tested too much. And neither is William Gomez. You know, this this is a good matchup. For me personally, guys, I'm going to side with who I believe to be the better boxer in this matchup. And that's going to be Francis Marshall. I'm not saying that William Gomez can't implement his kicks, you know, do well. But I just think the boxing is sharper for Francis. So that's going to be my pick. My pick is purely based on who I believe the better boxer is. So yeah, give me Francis Marshall to win potentially a close matchup. 
All right, guys, moving into a heavyweight matchup, we've got Mohamed Usman taking on Junior Tafa. Another fight where if you put your money on this matchup, it's very risky. And the reason why this one's going to be risky to bet. Now, if Mohamed Usman wants to win this fight, you don't go into this matchup and strike. If you're Mohamed Usman, the brother of Kamara Usman, what do we do with this matchup? Wrestle the opponent. We wrestle the opponent. And that's not to say that Mohamed Usman is like a, a brilliant, brilliant wrestler or anything like that. All you've got to do is just grab a single leg and just let the balance of Junior Taffa fail. You know, just try to let Junior Taffa balance on one leg. Let him try to balance. And if it fails, we go to the mat. And Mohamed Usman's a fridge. This guy is a big man. So if we go to the mat, Usman's probably going to dominate. And like I said, he's not a, a brilliant wrestler, a brilliant grappler, but he probably doesn't have to be against Junior Taffa. On the flip side, Junior Taffa is the brother of Justin Taffa, and he wants to strike. He wants to strike with Mohamed Usman. And the reason why he wants to strike with Usman is because Taffa is a better kickboxer than Mohamed Usman. So guys, if we stay on the feet with this matchup, there's potential for a TKO either side because it's low level and it's a heavyweight fight. We know with heavyweights, it just takes one big shot and anyone can win the fight. But guys, more than likely, you would side with Taffa to win on the feet. But like I said, it's dangerous because if Mohamed Usman just grabs a single and just lets the balance of Taffa fail... We go to the mat and Mohamed Usman might just have more experience. He does have more experience grappling. But yeah, gun to my head, I'm going to side with Mohamed Usman to get the wrestling going, get the grappling going. And once he gets into the mat, it could just be winning rounds or a ground and pound stoppage. So yeah, give me Mohamed Usman in a very risky matchup to bet. All right, moving into the next matchup, we've got a featherweight matchup between Norma Damon and Carol Rosa. This is a fairly difficult fight to predict now guys Norma Dumont does have power I don't think she's like the most technical but she's pretty powerful and if you look at Rosa against Lena Landsberg Lena was able to drop Rosa which wasn't a good look it's not a good look and if Lena can drop you Norma can definitely do damage like she's got the power guys even though I give the power advantage to Norma I do believe the technicality does go to Rosa I've never picked against Rosa and to be honest I do pick against Norma like quite a lot I pick against Norma all the time pretty much so yeah I'm gonna side with the fighter that I believe is better and that's gonna be Rosa but I don't know why she's stepping up to 145 why is she doing that I think the ground game of Rosa is better than Norma's. I think the footwork of Rosa is better than Norma's. I think there's quite a few things going for Rosa in this matchup, but power's not going to be one of them. Like, don't get me wrong, Rosa can crack. She can crack. But Norma's a big girl. You know, Norma's a, a natural 145er. But yeah, my prediction's going to be the fighter that I've not picked against, and that's going to be Rosa to be Norma DeMont. And guys, Rosa's the underdog. So yeah, I think that's probably the better pick, the better bet if you are going to bet this matchup. I'd advise Rosa as the play. All right, moving into the next matchup, we've got Ronnie Yaya taking on Montel Jackson. Now guys, this is lock of the century. This is lock of the century. I know Ronnie Yaya's got experience. I know his jujitsu's good, but yeah, Montel Jackson wins this like nearly nine times out of ten and that's because Ronnie Yaya is pretty old he's pretty slow his striking's not good and on the flip side Montel Jackson is big for 135 is he's powerful he's a good good wrestler but there's no need to even grapple against Ronnie Yaya you know Montel Jackson should dominate this fight probably a round one stoppage and if it goes past round one there's probably a round two stoppage and if it somehow goes 15 minutes, it should be 30-27. So yeah, give me Montel Jackson to win this matchup. This is a mismatch. Ronnie Yaya should not do well against Montel Jackson. And Montel should dominate this fight. And I also believe my prediction has like a, a solid 85% chance. Like this is a, a very confident prediction. Uh, moving into a, a weird matchup here. We've got Ricky Glenn taking on Christos Giagos. Now guys, if you look at Ricky Glenn with his last matchup against Grant Dawson, he did lose the first two rounds. He lost round one, he lost round two. But the reason why Ricky Glenn got a draw against Grant Dawson is because Grant got very, very tired in the last round and Ricky Glenn was really close to stopping that fight and essentially got scored a 10-8 now he did completely dust Joachim Silva like close to two years ago you know Joachim Silva went into that fight and just got dusted real quick now guys on the flip side Christos Giagos is on a two-fight losing streak and those losses come to Armand Sarukian and Thiago Moises 
So both of those guys are much better than Christos Giagos. In all fairness, Ricky Glenn is, is closer to the same level of Christos. Guys, I believe this matchup is pretty close to 50-50. And for those of you that do agree that this matchup is somewhat of a coin toss, for those of you that do agree with that, the play would be on the plus 150 Christos Giagos. Because we know plus 150 is an indication of 40%. And if you agree that this matchup is somewhat close to 50-50, that would mean there's plus 10% of value on Christos Giagos. And we know with gambling, the aim of the game is value. For those that don't have a lot of experience gambling, they think the aim of the game is to just pick the winner. Which ideally, that would be like the best thing to do. You know, you just want to pick the winner. But we do understand being perfect doesn't exist. No one has a 100% a win rate. And that's why when you get betting lines like Peter Yan minus 400 against Sean O'Malley, or in this case, Ricky Glenn as the favorite, you just got to ask yourself like, is the betting line accurate? And in my opinion, it's not. I think it's a 50-50 matchup. And if it's 50-50, I'm going to take the dog. I'm going to advise the underdog as the play. So give me Christos Giagos to win the matchup. Hey, if you waited to smoke with me, that's an amen. If you've been smoking this whole time, that's a double amen. If you're not a smoker, but you enjoy the smoke breaks, that's always been a triple amen. Let's go. Guys, I want to give big, big respect to Max Holloway. Max Holloway proved he's still one of the very best. Like, guys, nobody's figured out Max Holloway at 145. Just Volkanovski. And you look at what Arnie done in that fight. He didn't win the fight. He wasn't good enough, but he gave a good, good account of himself. You know, proved he was top five. And you love to see it. You know, you love to see that. Both of those guys, big, big respect. And guys, big respect to Ed Herman and Zach Cummings. I broke down that fight and I was speaking about, like, retirement. And it's good to see that after a war, they both retired. You know, big respect. But yeah, UFC Kansas, I got dusted. A lot of people got dusted. Like so many Money City comments just dusted. So yeah, hopefully on this card, we can get back to winning. Hopefully we can make some good predictions. And guys, just before I jump into the main card, remember, if you're a gambler, which 90% of my audience are gamblers, you've got to be responsible. And essentially, responsible gambling is looking at what you've got. Check your bank account, check how much money you've got, and take 1% of that number, and that's your bet. So if you've got 100 grand, your bet is, is 1,000 pound, 1,000 dollars. If you've got 50 grand, your bets are 500 dollars. If you've got 10 grand, your bets are $100. And for the people that have got less than that, still, I don't care. The same rules apply for every single gambler. To be responsible, you bet 1% of what you've got. That's responsible gambling. And that's responsible gambling. So take the advice or do not take the advice. It's up to you. All right, moving into the next matchup, we've got Jeremiah Wells taking on Matthew Semmelsberger. And guys, in all fairness... Jeremiah Wells is very, very dangerous. You know, Jeremiah Wells has got good jujitsu, but if you look at his striking, it's power. Power all day. You know, there's a chance he can just knock you dead. And that's what he'd done against Wally Alves. And he'd done that to Court McGee. Now, against Wally Alves, it was a right hook. You know, against Court McGee, it was a left hook. So both hooks, both hooks are money. And I wouldn't really advise uh, getting into a, a, a trading match against Jeremiah Wells. Now on the flip side, Matt Semmelsberger, he's not the best, he's not the worst. You know, his wrestling's pretty good. But man, like I said, do you want to get into a, a trading match with Jeremiah Wells? Because Jeremiah's left hook, it can, it can sleep you up. The right hook, it can sleep you up. So really you've got a You've got to be composed. You've got to be smart if you want to strike with Jeremiah Wells. And I'm not sure Matt Semmelsberger's got the IQ to, to really win that matchup. There is a chance that Matt could, you know, potentially wrestle early in the fight to fatigue Jeremiah Wells. There, there's a chance that could happen. Guys, I think this matchup's a good matchup, but I'm not going to be siding against the power of Jeremiah Wells. You know, like I said, the left hook, the right hook, it's money. And I think there's a chance he could sleep. Matt Semmelsberger but like I said if Matt wrestles Jeremiah and fatigues him and the fight goes longer then he could win the fight it's a good matchup I'm gonna side with Jeremiah Wells to get a stoppage all right guys moving into the next matchup we've got Yasmin Lucindo taking on Brogan Walker now guys Lucindo did lose her UFC debut but you can be impressed 
with that UFC debut. You know, Yasmin Haragui was able to win the matchup, but Lucindo was landing big, big shots. And for the whole 15 minutes, you know, Lucindo was showing you, look, I can scrap. I'm going to throw down. So even though Yasmin Lucindo lost that fight, she's young. She's good. She's got potential to, to grow into a very, very good fighter. Already very good. Now on the flip side, Brogan Walker did lose her UFC debut and... Unlike Yasmin Lucindo, I was not impressed with Brogan Walker. You know, she kind of looked physically weak. Her boxing didn't look great. Her ground game was just not good. Now, guys, this is women's mixed martial arts, and anything can happen with women's mixed martial arts, but if you're making a pick based on the UFC debut of Yasmin Lucindo and the UFC debut of Brogan Walker, if we're making a pick based off of that, it's very, very clear. It's very easy to make a pick. And I'm going to side with that logic. You know, I'm going to side with Yasmin Lucindo to, to dominate this matchup. All right, moving into a matchup between Bobby Green taking on Jared Gordon. Now, guys, Bobby Green, I'm a fan. I'm a big, big fan. And he got dusted by Drew Dober. You know, Drew Dober's a, a Muay Thai monster. You know, tough as nails. He's got power for days. His kicks are good. His pressure's good. He's tough. And eventually, Drew Dober was able to find a big, big shot against Bobby Green. Now, until that shot landed, Bobby Green looked very, very good. You know, the jab. The jab was money. You know, the jab was good. The right hand was good. He was countering Drew Dober. You know, he was working. He was looking good against Drew Dober. Now guys, is Jared Gordon going to go into this matchup and be able to do what Drew Dober done? You know, show toughness, land big shots eventually. I kind of doubt it. I know Jared Gordon's got good cardio, good wrestling, but even his wrestling probably isn't going to be good enough against Bobby Green. And that's because Bobby Green is a very good wrestler and his boxing is very good. So I kind of feel like this is a checkmate. You know, Bobby Green's just got the tools to beat Jared Gordon. And in my opinion, Jared Gordon did beat Paddy Pimblett, but Paddy's boxing is, is kind of bad. Whereas Bobby's boxing is like pretty slick you know, hands down, and he's able to pull that style off, you know, he's slick with that style, but yeah, like I said, I believe there's a checkmate, I think Bobby Green's boxing is too good for Jared Gordon, and I don't see the wrestling of Jared being good enough to beat Bobby Green, so yeah, give me Bobby Green to bounce back and win this matchup. All right, moving into the co-main event, we've got Brad Tavares taking on Bruno Silva. This is a pretty good co-main event. Guys, if you said to me, let's make a pick based on who's more intelligent, who's the better striker, who's more experienced, the pick is going to be Brad Tavares. But if you said to me, like, let's make a pick based on who can win the fight at any given moment, but they're not as technical, then we're going to pick Bruno Silva, the underdog. I think it's a good co-main event. You know, you look at Brad Tavares against Dracus Duplessis. Now, in round one, Brad Tavares looked good. But guys, then the second round starts and Brad Tavares, his striking defense just went out the window. It's like his head become a magnet for punches. So really, Brad Tavares has got to be focused. You know, you don't want to let Bruno Silva land those big damaging shots. Because even though Brad Tavares is more technical, more experienced, just a better fighter in my opinion, better striker, even though that's the case. If his striking defense isn't on point, he can lose the fight. And another thing about Brad Tavares is he's not super active. You know, he doesn't fight a whole lot. And that's maybe why the striking defense was a little bit rusty in the second round and the third round against Dracus de Plessy. But yeah, guys, in my opinion, the better fighter is going to be Brad Tavares. And that's got to be my pick. I think the striking of Bruno Silva against GM3 in his last matchup was kind of embarrassing. You know, just so reckless. And he really telegraphed like every punch. So yeah, give me Brad Tavares to win this co-main event. Now guys, moving into a, a very high level heavyweight matchup. We've got Sergei Pavlovich taking on Curtis Blades. This is a very, very good main event. Now really what you've got is a, a Greco-Roman wrestler in Sergei Pavlovich. For those of you that don't know, he is a Greco-Roman wrestler. But you wouldn't really guess that because when you look at Sergei Pavlovich... His boxing is so quick, it's so powerful, and he's really been dusting all of his opponents. You know, his hands are quick, they're sharp, they're powerful, they're dangerous. So you look at what he done to Derek Lewis, you know, a, a beautiful, quick TKO stoppage. Some could say it's, it's an early stoppage, but 
Yeah, he was going to TKO, and he did TKO Derek Lewis. You look at what Sergei Pavlovich done to Taitui Vaza, you know, dusted. So yeah, Sergei Pavlovich, there's a chance, there's a fair chance that he could just dust Curtis Blades. And guys, we know Curtis Blades has is, is got a dusty chin. You know, if you land against Curtis Blades, you're going to TKO Curtis. So yeah, if you're going to bet on the underdog Sergei Pavlovich, it's not a bad bet. But guys, this is the thing about Ben Sergei Pavlovich. If you look at his record and look at his most recent fights, they're all round one stoppages. Now, if you look at his UFC debut against Alistair Overeem, he got taken to the mat and he got smashed. Now, since his UFC debut, nobody has taken Pavlovich to the mat. So we've not really seen his ground game tested again. Now, guys, what is Curtis Blades really, really good at doing? What is he good at doing? He's the best wrestler at heavyweight, arguably. And I think that's pretty difficult to argue against. Now, if Curtis does want to win the matchup, it's very simple. We're taking Pavlovich to the mat. We're not striking with Pavlovich. We're not doing that. You know, we're taking Pavlovich away from the boxing. We're going to the mat. So for those of you that are going to bet Pavlovich, if we go past round one, the ticket might die. The ticket might become dust. Because guys, we've not really seen the cardio of Pavlovich and we've not really seen the ground game since the UFC debut. So I do believe the smarter bet, arguably, is going to be on the wrestler Curtis Blades to win this matchup. Now, is there a chance that Curtis just gets dusted? Is there a chance Pavlovich just KOs Curtis Blades? There's a chance. There's always a chance. But guys, outside of a round one stoppage for Pavlovich, if Curtis can get Pavlovich to the mat or even get him to the mat past round one, it could be a pretty straightforward win for Curtis Blades. And that's why, in my opinion, I'm going to side with Curtis Blades to win this matchup with a ground and pound stoppage. As always, my homies, go to the comment section, drop down your Money City comments, hashtag your comment, Money City. And as always, keep your eyes to the sky and never glue to your shoes. Das Mac Miller. Peace.